Melissa Sue Anderson, Little House on the Prairie, but she doesn't use Sue anymore. It doesn't seem like it's just Melissa Anderson. Welcome. How are you doing, Melissa? I'm great, and I'm honored to be with Charlie Tuna. <laughs> I grew up with you. Well, you're on a book tour now, a national book tour, with your new book, The Way I See It, about her days and the, the years, really, on a Little House on the Prairie. Mm-hmm. On the book tour itself, what's the strangest uh, question you've gotten from a fan so far? Is there one that stood out to you, or maybe a request, or um, reaction? Right. Well, I got, you know, from a from a disc jockey, actually, he said that when he was in college, he would uh, he would get off work, uh, you know, at like seven in the morning and he'd go. I guess he was working, you know, a, 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 an underling sort of position while he was going through college. And and he'd go back to the dorm and with a six pack and watch Little House. <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with this picture? This doesn't. And then they said they did drinking games with the. And I was horrified. My daughter was just finishing up her freshman year in school. And I'm like, I really don't need to hear this. <laughs> I, I really could have gone all day without this. It was just, I thought, with Little House of all things, you know. Tell me the day that you had to audition for Little House on the Prairie. I mean, you first had a meeting, right? And they said, come back, we'll, uh, we'll have you do a read. Right. And I, by the way, I'm wearing a blue shirt because they said you wore a blue outfit that day to enhance your very blue eyes, beautiful blue eyes. Oh, thank you. Well, you too. See, your shirt helps your eye. There you go. Brings them out. Yes, and um, uh, I did. Uh, my agent said, wear something blue. It brings out your eyes, you know. So I did. I wore a blue check shirt, I think. And uh, I, I had a, a, a big uh, meeting with the suits at NBC, and that's something I'd never done before. I'd never had, I, I had never auditioned for a pilot for a series, actually. So I'd never had one of these big kind of corporate-like interviews. And, uh, and, and that was interesting, and it was fun because Al Trisconi, uh, who was uh, the vice president of talent at that time, was very nice and made me feel very comfortable, so I didn't feel so scared and everything. And... Um, and it was great. I, I thought I was going in for some sort of Western. And he said, you know, do you, do you know what this is? And I said, no. And uh, a, a Western. And he said, it's uh, Little House on the Prairie. Have you read the books? And I said, oh, well, you know, of course. And, and I was very excited. And, and, uh, and then I was asked back uh, to read for Mike Landon. Um, and I did that, and uh, that was the day your mom got very excited. Right? Yes, yes, meeting Michael Landon. That's right. We uh, I, I write in my book um, all about it, where where we. Well, it's actually funny too because I I do screenplay pages in my book. Where, I love that uh, the way you've written that. I like that the way that you have uh, like you're reading a, a screenplay. Yes, it, it was a good device. I believe the reason I thought of it was because I wanted a way to get my head back into an 11 year old. And that came to mind. And, uh, and and it's worked out well because I think people like to see what a real script looks like to read. And, you know, my husband, who is a professional script writer, he uh, screenplay writer, he he did that for me. He, he, he form, you know, formatted it uh, because the publisher went nuts over that. They were like, ah! But uh, they have to do it all by hand. But um, but so he was he was the go the, the go between guy on that part. Um, but I, I wrote, of course, all the dialogue and everything, and it was great because I could really get into the characters. I I I, um, uh, I could really I, I really felt like I made uh, the you know Mike Landon sound exactly like he sounded at the, at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, and my agent was my agent and all that. So so they were very fun, and that happens to be one of those scenes where uh, we're exiting the. I've done the reading, and we're exiting the office, my mother and I, and we go the wrong way. And this voice from behind us says, you're going the wrong way. And and we turn around, and my mother really did almost faint because it was Mike Landon, <laughs> and he was so handsome, you know. And uh, and anyway, he walks us out, and it was a very you know pleasant and fun uh, conversation we had. And uh, and it was interesting because I, I talked about my, – my, my mother actually brought up that she was trying to – fill the gap in the conversation and 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 uh she brought up that you know she loves bonanza she she had loved bonanza Mm -hmm. and uh and i said oh yes and i love the one where you went blind which was an interesting thing for me to say at that time and uh and i said but but she put me to bed in the middle of it and he went what you put her to bed in the middle of my show you know and my mother was just dying but 
But it was really great because after it was all over and we said goodbye, I, I write in the book that we could have died happy because Michael Landon was like totally dreamy, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that's so much a prophetic statement of your eventual character on Little House on the Prairie with little Mary Ingalls who goes blind. That's right. That's right. So it is interesting that I <laughs> happened to... Pull that to, out of the air, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh my. Well, and one other little aside, too. Back in the 70s, you had a favorite Columbo episode. That eventually would be something else very prophetic, right? Right. Right, right. Uh, there was an episode, and now I can't think of the name of it, of course, but there was an episode where Jack Cassidy played a magician, and I loved it. And I'm not the only one. I guess a lot of people have seen it and really loved it, and they, you know, they play them so often. And uh, I just loved it. And it turned out that my husband, Michael Sloan, uh, that was one of his first writing gigs when he came he he, he went from when he was a little kid, uh, he moved to England for 16 years, and then he came back to uh, California, and that was one of the first things he did was uh, he wrote a spec script. Actually, that's what he did, a spec script and sent it to Universal. Mm -hmm. and, and and they never accepted spec scripts, but they did. And uh, and that was... Uh, and that was your favorite. Of that was your my favorite husband. and my husband, right, and the beginning of his career here, oh. yeah. There's one other thing, I, just kind of flipping through the pages, too. It said uh, you were the first one up for the part of Blue Lagoon that Brooke Shields eventually took. You know? Right, right, I was. You turned it down. I did, yeah. I, I, I just didn't feel comfortable. There was a lot of, you know... Yes. <laughs> yeah, it just there was there wasn't much of you want to say. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. You're running around naked on the beach. Almost. Right, right, right. It, yeah, it wasn't really my you know, and I, I'm you know I burn easily, and <laughs> but this isn't for me. But also I, I'm you know I had a morals clause in my uh, NBC contract, so I don't think it would have gone very far those negotiations anyway. Um, but she went on, you know, she yeah. made it famous. Yeah. You know. Well, that's what made you so perfect for your Mary Ingalls character, everybody says, because you both, you and your character, were very much alike, weren't you? Um, yes, because I was, uh, uh, as a kid, uh, very shy, mm -hmm. uh, reserved, and, and, and mis, you know, misunderstood a lot of the time where people would think that they, they, they'd get the impression that I was standoffish or you know, a snob or something because I, I might be thinking about something and I was very serious, you know, and I might be thinking about something and I could walk right by somebody. I wouldn't even see them. You know, I, I didn't mean not to say hello. I would go back and say hello, you know, but I, I just, it was one of those kids. And, um, and, um, and I was just, I was just, uh, uh, you know, really shy, but I, but I, I was able to, kind of channel that into the acting thing because that really became my niche. I really felt comfortable and, and it was a way of, you know, playing a character and getting out of yourself and it was easier to be more open. 